Well, hello, my name is Bill Bush, and I'm going to be talking to you a little bit today about my experience teaching RIP version 2 to students. Now, I want to start by saying that first and foremost, I don't dive into the, the deep technical details here uh, initially with my students. I try to stay very concept driven. I think that routing protocols, uh, you know, they, they, we're talking about many levels of operation here. And I find that if I don't start with the larger picture of where these things fit in our information universe, I lose some students and we have to do some backtracking. So if I, if I start up here conceptually and give examples of you know, the, the why and the where, uh, people are much more ready to dig into the how uh, much more quickly. So let's talk a little bit about uh, RIP first. Well, you know, RIP is old. It's ancient. Uh, in, the, in the calendar of internetworking technologies. And so we have to use that as a tool to explain, you know, it's a jumping off point for the more advanced protocols, the link state that we'll talk about in our enterprise networks. But it's a great place to start because it is a lot easier to understand. Uh, typically, I will uh, start with a, a brief history talking about the uh, origination of RIP coming from the Unix world with the routed protocol, or routed program, excuse me. And I will um, talk about how we evolved into RIP-1, the limitations with it, and, and the fact that uh, as we were beginning to run out of addresses, we needed to be able to start subnetting. So not only do they get a technology lesson, we get, we get some history there too. They, they start to see a continuum for the evolution of the technology, and, and that these things, in a lot of ways are, are dynamic and, and, and growing. The technology is evolving and changing to meet our needs as we change in our information world. Uh, you know, when I, when I start talking about the technical, oftentimes I need real-world physical examples that, to drive these points home with my students. When we're talking about distance vector routing protocols, of course, we need, to, we need to talk about the components, so we talk about the routing table and how the message, you know, propagates out through the network. But oftentimes, my students, particularly if they've never been exposed to technology, they don't have any frame of reference and they don't understand uh, where I'm going with this stuff. So uh, case in point, when we're talking about administrative distance and how uh, RIP version 2 has a very high administrative distance, comparatively speaking, to some of the other routing protocols. Well, they don't, they don't have a frame of reference. They don't, they don't know that that's a significant shortcoming of the technology. So one thing I like to use, uh, particularly with things like administrative distance, is the telephone game. And I don't know if you've ever played that when you were, when you were a, a small child, but with the telephone game, I'll have my students, and it's great if you don't tell them what you're doing. You just have everybody get in the middle of the room and get in a circle. And you have one person come up with a message. And then they, in turn, whisper it to the person next to them. And as it goes around the room, typically I've found more times than not, it doesn't always work, but more times than not, the original message is completely destroyed by the time it gets to the last person in the circle. And so I have the first person say what their message was, the last person has something completely different, and then I can step in and say, that's administrative distance, that's what I'm talking about. It's, it's the reliability of the information that you're getting from your neighbor routers. And they go, oh, okay, I get it. And, and what I find is all of a sudden, uh, number one, I've got them off balance. So they're saying, where is this guy going with this stuff? But I've hooked them, and I'm, I've intrigued them, and I find that when I, when I come up with um, creative ways to engage them, that I get much better interaction from my students. Other things that I use when talking about these very simple technologies or analogies with, uh, you know, mailing a letter. And we talk about how that letter is routed through the postal network. And I'm, I'm sure that most of you think of that analogy when you're teaching this type of material. 
I find that the more physical things that I can do with my students, I'll, I will have them write, you know, we'll photocopy um, routing tables empty and we have them fill it out, but I have them determine what names they're going to use. We don't necessarily use IP addresses at first, but I, I have them put skin in the game to, uh, again, hook them and, and get them excited about learning this technology. Another thing that I find that helps is a comparative analysis. I know in my own learning style, I like to be able to, you know, I like that delta. I want to know, okay, I'm here, but how does this differ from other things out there? So I use a lot of uh, rubrics or charts that break it down so that you can, you know, you can clearly show, yes, these are all distance vector routing protocols, but if you look at RIP 1 and 2, you can see that they're practically identical with the exception of VLSM. And then I can go into explaining, you know, the significance of VLSM. Again, I'll, I'll backtrack to a little bit of the history of why we need to subnet. I don't necessarily go into subnetting unless somebody wants to know about it. As I, you know, that's, that's a horse of a different color uh, and oftentimes would completely eclipse any discussions I'm having about the routing protocols. So I, I try to mix and match from other lessons, uh, often you know, doing some blended learning. And I don't have any really real one magic formula or, or process that I use. It, it's entirely dependent upon the level of experience in the class. Uh, if I'm lucky enough, I'll have a student that's doing this out in industry. And a lot of times, I will engage them to help me teach the class, number one. I, sometimes they can present it in a, a language that the students can relate to. Uh, I, in fact, at one time I had a guy who, um, he used a video game that all of the, the kids knew about uh, to explain it. I didn't, I'd never heard of the video game before, but the lights went off for all the students because they said, oh yeah, I know that game. Okay, that's how that works. So I, I try to, you know, bring uh, group participation in as much as I possibly can when talking about these things. And, you know, I've had some good feedback from my students over time. The, uh, the telephone game particularly, it really seems to drive things home for, for them. I'll have people come back to me uh, sometimes several semesters later and I say, you know, the one thing I remember about that class was when you talked about the distance vector routing protocols because you made us do that game and I didn't know, I thought you were crazy, but you know, the, you, it all came together and I understood it and it really made it a lot easier for me for the rest of the class.